Hello and welcome to my Rhino 6 settings tutorial. Uh, this tutorial is going to cover all of your basic settings in Rhino and start to set up some ways to work more efficiently and quicker while using Rhino and also help with some visual aids and just overall um, convenience and kind of talk through why some ways might work better than others. Um, so to begin this tutorial, um, we have here just this standard model that we'll be kind of using to demonstrate some things. But generally your toolbars should look like this when you open up Rhino out of the box. Um, so the first thing you're always going to want to do uh, when in a new file is go to your Rhino options. And so that's this little gear wheel tool right here. And if you click on that, um, you should see the Rhino options. So I'm just going to run through a few things here. There's a lot of options. Um, not all of them need to be paid attention to at the moment, but there are some key things to point out as we start a new project. Um, so the very first thing would be units. Um, so I believe the default Rhino might come in millimeters, but it's important to make sure and check and put this into inches. Um, so we'll just drop down, we'll put this in inches and we'll click on feet and inches and your precision, um, eighth inch is a little tight, maybe I'll go to quarter inch. Um, I like to keep my models in inches, um, mostly because if I'm importing from AutoCAD or Revit, it just makes things e easier because AutoCAD specifically will like to export in inches and this way I won't have to scale anything if I import other models. Um, and typically I'm working in a detail where inches are easier for me. If I want to move something six inches, I could just move it six rather than moving, if, if this was set to feet and if I wanted to move something um, six inches, I'd have to just I'd put it as 0.5 for half a foot. Um, moving along, um, aliases are extremely important. I, I highly recommend setting these up early on. Um, there's something that'll save you a lot of time down the road in your in modeling. Um, there are some defaults set in here. Some of them are less helpful. For example, C is set to select crossing, which is a command I've literally never used ever. Um, C, I think maybe much more obviously, could be set to copy which is a command you will use frequently. So to edit what's existing there, all you could have to do is just type in and change it. Um, if you'd like to make a new one, you could make click on this new. And so something like um, trim, for example, I'll do TR and I'll type in the command trim. And now um, from here on, once I hit OK, um, I will have the short key set to that. Um, the other thing you can do is also import a whole set, um, and I have a lot of them saved. So if you have a file of saved um, short keys and you're on a different computer or something like that, you can always just it, import your saved ones off a thumb drive. Um, so I'm going to import um, my aliases text file. Click OK. Yes to all. Okay, so there's 42. So now you can see all of the ones that I typically use. Um, some of the key ones in here, D for distance, um, extrude curve, extrude surface, polyline. These will be used quite frequently. Mirror, um, grouping items, rotating, very, very straightforward things. Um, another thing I'd like to talk about is um, saving in Rhino. Um, if you go to the files drop down or tab here, you'll see that it shows your autosave options. Um, autosave can be a lifesaver. Um, make sure that's checked. Make sure it's set to at least a minimum of 15 or I'd say a maximum of 15 minutes. Um, and check where it's saving you at right now. It's a, it's a little bit of an odd location where it saves it typically. Uh, if you click here, you can actually change that and set up a new file for where you'd like to save it. Um, so go ahead and do that. It'll 
it's almost inevitable that at some point Rhino will crash. And if you only lose 15 minutes, it's not that big of a deal. If you lose a whole day, it can be devastating. So make sure to, that that's checked and that you're paying attention to where it's being saved once it happens. Because once Rhino shuts down and you open it up, it may not come up right away. You may need to go digging for it. Um, moving along, I'm going to go all the way down at the bottom to the views. I'm going to click the drop down click the drop down on display mode. I'm going to change a few of my view settings. So if I click on wireframe, I'm going to turn off show ISO curves. In my opinion, it just adds a lot of noise to your, the visual of the project. Um, and I'm going to turn my edge thickness down to one. This will make the lines a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier to read. If I go to my shaded mode, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to turn off ISO curves. And I'll change my edge thickness to one. Um, I'm not going to worry about the render and ghosty settings that now. We'll we'll follow it up in a different tutorial. I'll hit OK, and all of those settings have taken place. So now, if I look at my drawing, you can see that my object is not showing any of the ISO curves. It is just showing the edges. Um, my lines are nice and thin, um, my model set inches, and my shortcuts are ready to go. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about are the toolbars. Um, this is sort of the default toolbar set. Um, some things I think are very helpful to get in the habit of is to split your right side. So it, your default is all of your um, properties here. So the layers are going to be something that's very important. So what I'm going to do is I just click this and drag it out to the middle here. And then I can grab it in the top. And if I pull it down to the bottom and I see that purple highlighted as sort of the bottom half, I can kind of drag this up. Now I have my properties and my layers kind of both occupying this right-hand bar, which is great because a lot of times I'll need to bounce between them really quick. And it's just faster to see them than have them into the tabs. Um, some of the other, so there's a little bit of real estate over here and here. So there's a couple other toolbars I like to just keep in that extra space. Um, one of them is um, solid tools. So if you'd like to add another toolbar to your default view, you can just right click anywhere in the toolbar, go to show, show toolbar, and then scroll down. And somewhere down here is solid tools. So that'll kind of pop up as this floating toolbar. And if I drag it and I kind of hold, hover down at the bottom left, and I'll drag this up a little bit too. Now I have my solid editing tools. These are tools I use very frequently. Um, so I like to keep that there. Um, another toolbar I like to show is my uh, scale. So scale is something that I also use very frequently, scaling 1D, 2D, 3D. Um, it exists right here, but it's sort of dropped down within here. So I'd like to just keep it up here separate because I think it it, um, it, make, it makes um, you know reaching for it much quicker. Um, and the last and maybe the most important toolbar is your mouse toolbar. So if you right click, that'll be your um, rotation. And left click is going to be your selecting, so you'll select things. Um, if you use the middle mouse button, you'll notice a toolbar pops up. Um, so this toolbar is a great way to have a quick um, toolbar that you can use very frequently. Um, mine is already set, but I'll show you how to modify it to make um, navigating around your project much quicker. So if you click your middle mouse button and then sort of grab the toolbar right here so it, it, it pops out, so now it's sort of locked out there. Um, and you go to up to this little red car, which is the right view, click on the, the drop down till you see all of these icons here. Grab that by the top and pop that out as well. And I'll, I'm gonna sort of undo this real quick. Um, you should see a icon that's called place target and it looks like this it's sort of like a target um, what you're going to want to do is hover over that and press shift so you can see when i press shift um, this move edit dialog pops up 
Once I have that, I can drag it over to my middle mouse button one and sort of put it right in the middle there. Oops, I missed a little bit. I'm going to scoot that down. Uh, I missed it again. Come on. Sometimes it helps to extend it. There we go. Got it right there in the middle. Um, and if you have more toolbars here, I think there's typically another one here, you can always just hold shift and drag it out into empty space and it'll just delete it. Basically what you'd like to do is set this up so that it's a three by three grid with your place target icon in the middle. And if I exit out of those, now when I press my middle button, the place target comes up right away and I can just press my left click and it sets up that command very quickly and now I can place my target. And so why is this tool, tool um, in particular something that you want to use for your middle mouse button? Um, the reason is um, when you're working in, an, in a file and let's say you're working right here on this railing, very close in here, and you're trying to get in here and maybe put a nice little profile on this railing, but then you come all the way to the other side of the model, and now you're working on this light. When you rotate around, as you can see, my, my object, my model is not rotating around the light. The light itself is moving, so it makes it difficult to get to all the different sides of my light. If I use my middle mouse button and that place target, and I select anywhere on this light, now, when I rotate, the whole model rotates around the light itself. So I'm sort of zoomed in on my light. It's way easier to um, make modifications. And then if I need to go back inside this model, and now let's say I'm working on this sofa, which is not centered on my, my mouse at the moment, I can just place target anywhere on my sofa. And now, my camera sort of rotates around that place target. So as you move through your, your model, whatever you're working on, you essentially just want to get it in your view, place target, select near it, and then that's an area you can zoom in nice and close and get those details worked out. Um, it's sort of just a navigational tool and it's something you want to get into the habit of, of whatever you're working on. Um, if you come to the stairs, that you always just middle button, left click, select the object, and that'll be your main focus. Um, so the last thing I want to cover on this setup is to think about um, the sort of conceptually about what to use between icons, your command line, and your short keys. Um, they all work exactly the same and honestly I use a little bit of everything. Some Sometimes when there's tools that I don't know the command off the top of my head but I, I see the icon I'll just go to here um, like boolean difference for example if I want to use that I usually just click this icon um, instead of trying to type out boolean difference which is your command. Um, and I happen to have not have set up a short key for Boolean distance or, or Boolean difference because I don't use it that often. Whereas something like polyline, I typically just type PL enter because I make polylines all the time and once and I don't want to look for the icon, I just want to know that I go PL and I can start drawing a polyline. Um, the other thing to note is that all of these icons, or most of these icons, typically have two commands within them. Um, so, for example, if I hover over rotate, you can see my left mouse click button is rotate 2D. My right click mouse button, if I do this, will be rotate 3D. So there's sort of two rotation tools hidden in that one icon. Um, if I start typing rotate, you can see rotate comes up and it sort of autocorrects, and then rotate 3D is the next one, so I could do that as well. Um, I have R set up as my rotate alias, so if I just press R, you can see that comes up. There's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, and not one's better than the other. It's really about finding your own way to be most efficient in what, gets, in what you're comfortable with. Um, probably I use a little bit of everything because I learned a, bit, a little bit of everything as I went along, and there is some, some you know, old AutoCAD habits that sort of migrated their way into Rhino and, and things like that. So just be aware of 
of um, the many different ways to bring up commands. That said, it's important to note that a lot of commands, when you bring them up, they will ask you for a diff additional information up here that you want to make sure that you're paying attention to. Um, for example, something that's really typical would be the extrude. So if I make a simple rectangle here and I want to extrude it, uh, I can type extrude. I have my short key is EC for extrude curve. Um, what will happen right away is the command gets going and you can see right now it's set to extrude both directions. It's also making a, it's not making a solid. If I look over top, I can see right through that. That's because in my command line, I have all these other options that I can look at too. So one thing I could do is make it solid, yes. So now if I look at it, I'm creating a solid box. Um, both sides will say no, I actually just want to extrude it up. Um, so there's various options within a, a command. So it's important if, if something, if the command isn't doing quite what you want to double check these to, to see if there are a few different ways to edit it even more. Um, and then I'll click here and now I got the box that I was um, extruded up that I was hoping for and not the double sided extruded hollow box that the default was set to. Just delete that. And that should cover it for this first little quick um, settings um, tutorial.